Hi folks, if you're listening to this video, it's because we're going to be learning about Canadian statistics on science literacy. Now, the information that I'm presenting to you is from a report from the Council of Canadian Academies. And this data is from 2014. So while it is a little bit dated, it is the most up-to-date data that we have available. And I think in the context of learning about science literacy, this is really important to see where, as a nation, we stand as Canadians. So as noted from the Council of Canadian Academies, it's really clear that we need a society that is generally knowledgeable and literate about science and places a high value on science and its applications. As we noted in class, science literacy doesn't respond just to understanding science and being able to think about a hypothesis, for example, but rather that critical thinking is important in day-to-day decision-making. In this particular publication, what they looked at were a few different things. First of all, the public engagement in science, Canadian public's attitude towards science and technology, our general public science knowledge, and then also looking at this from a careers perspective by looking at science and technology skills in the population as a whole. In the next two slides, I'm going to be presenting to you some data. What I want you to think about is what are Canada's strengths when it comes to scientific literacy? Where is Canada falling short in regards to scientific literacy? And why as scientists should we be concerned with general public science literacy? This data that I'm showing is from a ranking of out of 35 countries on average. Now, as you can see, the actual number of countries that are reporting this data is going to vary a little bit, and that's because this data was taken from a few different sources. That being said, this is obviously not all the countries in the world, nor is it um, solely limited to developed countries, but developing countries are included in this report as well. Now, one thing to note, you can see that in Canada, we are first for um, out of those 33 countries as being very interested or moderately interested in new scientific discoveries and tech, which, you know, this is a positive thing. You can also see that our reservations about science, though this looks that we are first and that we would have the most, actually what this means is that as a country, we have the least reservations about science. And what we mean by this in the survey was the potential for science to be used for not so great things, okay? And finally, if you look down at the bottom, the percentage of the population that regularly or occasionally participates in activities um, related to science and technology, we're also the first out of 33 countries. Okay, so this is indicating this percentage or score, indicates how many, what percentage of the population that responded, indicates that they agreed with this. So in terms of um, informal science education, you know, that which is not taking place in school, we have a pretty good representation here in Canada of that going on. In public science knowledge, we are 40, we are first out of 35 countries in those that display a basic science level or a basic level of scientific literacy. And that sounds great. But if you look at our percentage, only 42% of adult Canadians have a basic level of science literacy. And we're first in the world of those countries that were surveyed. So that should be something for us to think about more critically. When it comes to uh, engineering and, uh, sorry, degrees in science and engineering, we are falling a little bit behind. And particularly um, when it comes to university degrees in engineering awarded um, to women, you can see that we are fairly low on that rank, which is surprising that you might think when you consider the level of science literacy. The other thing to keep in mind is that our percentage of the population with tertiary education is over 50% and we're first among um, the surveyed countries. 
So what's interesting to note here is that tertiary education, so secondary is high school, tertiary is post-secondary. So this could be a combination of college and or university, not just solely university. Now, what about the world? If we look specifically compared to different countries, how are we fairing? And to look at this data, essentially they define science literacy in fairly basic terms, which I think is important to note. So to be scientifically literate, someone needs to have a basic understanding of science terms and constructs and a general understanding of the nature of scientific inquiry. Now, if we think back to the Lou article that you guys looked at, you'll know that this is indeed a very basic definition and that by and large, we use um, other types of recommendations and scales for looking at science literacy, but this is a very basic one. As noted earlier, our science literacy by country is the highest, and you can see this is even in compared to um, other developed countries in that approximately 42% of our population as defined by the previous terms of what it means to be science literate um, are scientifically literate. What's interesting is that you can see a gender gap here as well, and you can see compared um, to the United States, and please note that this is from 2008, so it is a little bit older, right? So these values could change slightly. You can see that basically on all measures, Canada is ahead of the United States when it comes to science literacy. What's also important to note is that by and large, women are less science literate than men, and that the amount of education that one has also correlates to the amount of science literacy that one has, which probably makes sense. Essentially, one thing to take away from this is that 32% of women in Canada are scientifically literate, whereas based on these statistics, 53% of men are scientifically literate. There are five key recommendations uh, based on the Canadian Council of Academies is to support lifelong science learning, be more mindful of being inclusive when we are talking about science education, enhance communication and engagement, adapt to new technologies, and provide national or regional leadership. So you can think about for a minute how Canada has been addressing these recommendations. Have we made some progress with these five key recommendations? What I want you to think about is how has your understanding of science literacy been challenged by what you learned today? And by today, I mean in the Canadian science literacy facts, as well as in the discussions that we had in class. What I want you to think about is which Canadian statistic did you find most troubling or surprising and why? And finally, I wanted to show you the rubric upon which you'll be evaluated. It is out of six marks, as you can see here. And these are the different criteria that I want. I want you to challenge your thinking. I want you to have some depth of reflection. And this part is important as well. I want you to think about your reflection in the context of the learning outcomes and objectives, goals, and tasks within this course. How is what you've learned supporting and facilitating your kind of overall understanding of science literacy? Thanks for listening in folks, and I will see you in class.